All right, here we are, day 10 into ketosis. And I'm gonna check my blood ketones. I've been floating around 0.5, which is like the theoretical threshold of being in ketosis. Now, being day 10, I've put it out there, I've done a bit around like my my ketone diet. People have been asking me like, why are you doing this? Like, what, what do you stand to gain from doing a, a ketotic diet? Now, for me, like in terms of what I'm doing it for now, it's a lot of general interest. I love doing this kind of stuff, testing, self-experimenting, and here we go, figuring out what works, what doesn't. Um, and then there's also the factor of cleaning up my diet. Like, I've been eating horribly since lockdown, as most of you have as well i'm sure and i just want to set a standard so ah uh, yeah 0.4 so just floating around that that ketone ketotic level of 0.3 to 0.5 like i said in my last video i'm not super attached to being 0.5 or higher like what i'm really focusing on is making sure i have an accumulation of ketones in my body and i'm restricting my carbohydrates so over the last or, well, 10 days, <laughs> I've um, averaged around 71 grams, about one gram per kg per day. Now, that's more than most would recommend, but I'm getting the results, I'm in ketosis, and does it really matter? That's <laughs> something I want to go into around, like, what do you stand to gain from ketosis in, this, in pretty much the application to, to sport and exercise or sports science. So when we are trying to produce ketones or we're trying to reduce our carbohydrate intake we're doing so to maximize fat oxidation so when we are maximizing our our fat oxidation we are maximizing the amount of energy we can utilize from fat now fat is like infinite um and we can just like go and go and go uh, and that's amazing if we can make that more efficient we can produce more power on the bike we can run faster swim faster everything while preserving glycogen because if you have a look at um what i did in my 10k running race on the weekend you know i was four minutes slower than i would have liked and three and a half minutes slower than my previous 10k a few weeks ago and i would consider that i'm in better shape now you, you pretty much just can't do high intensity exercise because that requires some high octane fuel and that requires glycolysis and anaerobic metabolism without glycogen you can't do anaerobic metabolism but when you do like really long endurance events and when i say really long i'm talking about an hour plus because theoretically two to five minutes is an endurance event as well so when you're going over an hour you start to exist in this situation where it's you're using glycogen but not at a really fast rate and not really anaerobically so you need it there but you need a lot of fat and the more fat you can use the more glycogen you can preserve and so it kind of either allows you to top up your speed with the glycogen and anaerobic or just glycolytic metabolism or it allows you to just go for longer before completely hitting the wall. So it's like that rate of decline of your finite glycogen. So just in this diagram here, you can see we have, by having ketones in our blood system, we have this extra source of energy, which we can provide into the Krebs cycle, along with beta oxidation, which is fatty acids, and along with glycolysis. Now, it's being in ketosis and wanting to perform optimally like they're kind of at odds but if you can do it and one of the reasons why they theorized a ketone supplement would work is if you can throw ketones in there with carbs with fat and maximal fat oxidation from being in ketosis you get like the best of both worlds and you get this massive endurance boost now i tested all of this during my phd i couldn't see any benefit in a ketone supplement i could see increase in ketones couldn't see any change in metabolism couldn't see any change in performance and pretty much everyone kind of just thought they tasted disgusting it tastes like vinegar and so when we're really just trying to do a diet like this to manipulate our metabolism to make ourselves more metabolically flexible that is being able to take a fuel source whether in your skeletal muscle in your liver in your adipose tissue utilize it to make you perform optimally and what i found during my research was 
once you start to you know fight you know fine tune these metabolic systems they require like heavy doses of stimulus to force any more adaptation otherwise you kind of just exist in this plateau and that's what i like to do it's kind of like a shock to the system you, you always kind of revert back to the mean which is like eating junk food, relying on carbs, getting stuff that's easily sourceable, cheap food, and that's generally carb dense, and it doesn't do a lot to aid in your metabolic flexibility or your metabolic efficiency or the amount of stored body fat you have. And that's why, in a lot of cases, you can lose quite a bit of weight. So that's me, day 10, why I'm doing it, how it works, and kind of what the metabolism factor is of ketosis. Till next time guys, happy training.